Welcome, you sexy, sexy nerds, to a bit of a, a special broadcast. Now, while I'd usually go through tips and guides and try to create videos to show you how to do things, um, I wanted to throw together something in particular that you can all do yourselves. So, um, paying very little attention to the map, this is a, a new project of mine, I've been in the process of creating what I'd like to call the Bacon Box. Now this is selflessly whorish in the naming, but the Bacon Box is a collection of stamps. Now these are stamps that I've been using for the past six or seven years in mapping, which I find exceptionally helpful. They range everything from um, debris and barricades to ruins that are already made for you. The idea with this is that whenever you come across creating a new map, they are perfect for just filling in the gaps to flesh out a map. You can even get rid of them if you wanted to later on. But the idea is that they are very, very quick references, which are superbly useful for new mappers. And what I always used to find, and I imagine a lot of you find it as well, is that when you're mapping, time is always an issue. Stamping may seem like cheating in some respects, but it can make it so much quicker. So what I'll show you is what I have of the bacon box so far. The reason why I'm showing you this is because I want to show you how to do it yourselves and therefore if you have anything that you want to add into it, we'll have a way that you can do so. I'll be judging all the entries that we have and I'll add them to the bacon box permanently and continue to do so for a number of months. So what I have here is a list on my um, splat tool. This is still in a temporary folder, so it says, but that's not really important. And within here is everything with a prefix bacon box. In here I have around 40, if not more, different stamps from various uh, maps. So I've got some old favourites like the Bow uh, Lowlands, I've got Bernia Samur, I've got Khan, um, some of my own maps like Corellia, Leon all the way down to some of the more recent ones that I've released in the workshop over the last year. Now all of these are just very quick reference uh, objects. For example, I have a roadblock which I saved from Peroni. And if I place that, all I have to do is use the height tool on object placement in order to make it fit. And it's things like this that save you hours and hours of hassle in trying to rotate all these individual girders to fit into this roadblock. So that is the basic idea with this stamp tool. I'll show you some more in the process of it, but the basic idea is that it's just time saving. Some of these ruins from Khan, for example, are so random and sporadic that they are extremely difficult to replicate. and they may only serve a purpose as to block off an area of an urban map but they work perfectly for it and what I've always found is that in particular things like this work great in out of bounds areas because personally I always feel as though it is a little bit dirty to copy someone else's work into your own map but in the out of bounds area where no one really looks it's good for fleshing them out without being too cheaty now that's not to say that I don't think even professionals use stamping, because I know that they do. But what they'll usually do is stamp something in and start changing it to try and suit the map. So for example over here I have a segment of Leon, which I've adapted to fit into my own map. The principle is still there, I have used someone else's work, but I've only used it as a reference of a shape in order to change it to suit the map itself. And I would recommend that anyone who's trying to get into mapping to do the same. Look at the professional stuff, paste it into your own map, and then adapt it to fit your own style and design. So, I will show you first how to do this yourself, and then we'll have a look at some entries, and over the next couple of weeks I will do some more videos to show what has been added to the bacon box. Okay, so... Uh, let's go on to uh, another map, and I will try and find something to stamp across for the bacon box. Now, uh, seeing as I'm being typically whorish, I will go on to one of my own maps. 
Um, nope. So, uh, Sitard is um, currently a five star on the workshop, which I'm very, very happy about. Um, and it seems to have picked up quite a lot of uh, original um, sections. Now, this was never purposeful. You don't design a map with the idea that it's going to be popular. It just so turns out that this one has. And I loved making it. Absolutely adored making it. And there's some areas of it that I would uh, love to use again. Now, that's another thing about stamping. You can, say, have a basic ruin, like the one that I showed you from Khan. And even if it's a very basic ruin, if you rotate it even slightly, you probably won't recognize where it's come from. But with the splats and um, the heights, the damage to ruins, or the appearance of whatever stamp you're using, it can bring back a little bit of nostalgia from old maps. So I've tried to get as many different stamps from Company of Heroes 1 maps as I possibly could, because it really does bring back feelings of being on those old maps that don't exist anymore. Right. So, uh, in Satard, let's have a look at something that I can stamp. Uh, ah, here we are. Right, okay. Oh, no, I know a better one. I'll leave that. Over here. Right, I like this. This is one of my favourite little uh, breaks in an urban area, just because now we can use things like collapsed floors. So... What you would do if you wanted to create something for the bacon box is go onto your stamp tool and make sure you have selection. I am trying to keep away from bound boxes in this. Bound boxes are not specific enough in what they are selecting. So, for the purpose of, the, the purpose of this, I want objects. I don't want impasse at all. I don't want water taps. Do select height, but it doesn't make much difference really when, on selections. Get rid of squads. And for the sake of moving this onto other people's maps, please do not select grass or tiles. The reason for this is that if you select grass and tiles, it will import your map settings onto someone else's map. And that may bring across a type of grass or a type of tile that they do not have on their map at the moment, which can cause some problems. So, for the purposes of making things easy for people to use, avoid that. Get rid of groups, get rid of territory, get rid of ice, get rid of soft map edge, and markers. You just want basically objects, height, splines and splats. And you can choose not to have the splines and splats if you want to. If you just want it to be an arrangement of objects, that's fine. But, seeing as I've got rubble and tracks in here, I want to save that as well. So, you only have to worry about the acquire side of it for now. Open up your temporary folder and have a look for here. At the top, it will come up with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 if the stamp has been created. Unless you already have that number, and then it will be the next number along. So, if I click and drag across the area, it has now selected just about everything that was in reach of my click. But, to try and clean things up, I want to get rid of some of the excess uh, splines that have been added. The way to do this is to hold the Shift key. So, with Shift held down, you can click on anything else and it will add it to the list but click on it again and it will get rid of it so I don't want this little splat here it doesn't seem to fit in with it so if I click on it again to add some more stuff and click off it it's no longer added uh, add those all in I want all those but I don't want this road so click on it and then get rid of it and hold, holding shift again click on that and get rid of that and I've got the sidewalk here, which I don't want. Click on that and get rid of it again. And there we have all the rubble and tracks that lead towards this particular part of a ruin, which is great. Now you just go on create stamp, and it will come up with zero 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 zero. So you don't have to worry about this part. Uh, I will do it myself for any entries that come in. But I'm labeling them bacon box in square brackets, then the name of the map, and then the type of thing that it, you've got. So this is not a ruin, this is an urban block. So it's a, a series of buildings that can be garrisoned. If it involves half and half, it's a ruin. If it's a series of ruined buildings, it's a cluster, and so on and so forth. 
you can try and name it yourself and designate it, but I will change the names of any stamps that are incorrect or that don't fit in properly. So it's a Satard Urban Block. So people will know as soon as they see this that that's a series of garrisonable buildings. Right, okay. Now, that is a very, very simple way of doing it. I will go on to um, the old map again, because it's a bit emptier, so you can work with it a little bit more. And I will show you uh, how to check that your stamp actually works. Because it's all well and good sending them in to me, but if they don't actually work properly, I'm going to have to try and fix them all, and that's a pain in the ass for me. So, I'm, uh, I'm saving myself some trouble. So I'll just wait for this to load. Here we are. Right, okay. Find a nice open area, wherever you can. Get your stamp tool out. Open the list. And find the one that you're looking for. Here we are. So, when you're doing this, you can change placement options, but there's, there's really no point. The idea is that when you've acquired it, it's only acquired certain things anyway. So placing it, say I have tiles ticked on this, it's not going to place any tiles because there were no tiles acquired. So, go on to a Satard and just press enter to place it. And there you have the stamp as copied. Now you may notice that it hasn't done certain things, like this wooden floor has lost its height. That is just the nature of transferring stamps. If we go into object placement here and highlight everything, go on to adjustable, I can grab this, raise it up a little bit, and then get the height map tool out, and start adding some of the rubble underneath it like it used to be in the original map. And there you have it. Everything is just about back to normal. So this is an extremely easy way to transfer some favourite things across onto new maps, to use other people's work that they're willing to share with you and hopefully just make things a lot easier for those first time mappers out there. So like I said, the uh, Bacon Box has about 40 or so assets in there at the moment. It will increase in number as well and there is going to be a description and a link below this video for you to try and add your own. It'll be a Dropbox, so please if you have anything at all to share, do so. I'd be happy to take on anything at all. And towards the end of the month, we will come for our first release and show it off to the public. So, this has been Monolithic Bacon. Thanks a lot for watching this, and I hope that you have something to add. I look forward to seeing all the entries that we have. So, I will see you next time.